Hello guys. So today we are out on a little bit of a modernish classic. Um, some of you may remember that I did a review on the uh, Vespa GTS 300 uh, the other week. Uh, so today I thought we'd come out on something a little bit older. Um, now this isn't quite a uh, classic in the sense that some Vespas are. Um, this is actually a 2001 model, um, one of the last of its kind before they were discontinued in sort of late 2001, early 2002. Um, <clears throat> so yes, like I say, it's not quite a classic as such, but it's the last of what I like to call the proper classic Vespas. Um, so yeah, let's have a look around this. Uh, styling wise, as you can see, it's very much the same as the classic Vespas, but it's a little bit more boxy. Um, so the the PX200, uh, it's actually had quite a long production run. I mean, it started off as the P200X, uh, or the P200E, I think it was, back in the sort of late 70s. Um, and then uh, it carried on through production through to 2001. Um, at some point, they changed it to the PX200. Um, but yeah, it's essentially the same. Not an awful lot's changed. The only difference is things like the... Um, uh, lubrication system and things like that, which I'll get onto in a minute. But yeah, styling wise, it's very classic in the leg shield and everything else, but at the same time it does have boxy elements. Um, that's kind of, as you'd expect from the sort of late 70s, early 80s, you know, they were kind of into quite square boxy shapes. So the front mudguard, for instance, is fairly boxy. Um, you've got this quite boxy horn cover here. Similarly with the indicators, they're very sort of rectangular, very sort of sharp edges almost. Um, and then as we move around to the back, uh, again, the rear tail light's quite boxy as well. Um, but it still has that same classic style. It's still got the iconic rear end that resembles a wasp. It's still very much a classic Vespa in that sense. Um, so yeah, moving on to the engine. As I said before, it is a 200cc, two-stroke, single cylinder. Um, it produced... Out of the factory, it produces somewhere in the region of 12 brake horsepower, which means this bike is capable of uh, around about 65-70 miles an hour top end is the claimed um, figures. This one is a little bit different. It does have a 210 kit on it, um, a 210 touring kit as well, so it's kind of ported and everything else for a little bit more power, but also for sustained, um, you know, long runs. Um, it's not like a high-end uh, performance cylinder kit, uh, but it does still give it that little bit more oomph. Um, yeah, so as I was saying with the engine, on these things, the engine is actually under this panel. Uh, it's hanging off of one side, so obviously um, on the one hand that means that it's not quite as well balanced as a modern scooter, but then on the other hand it does make it a lot easier to repair if things go wrong. So. If you need to get to the engine to fix something, all you've got to do is remove this panel, um, and it's all there. You don't need to, you know, worry about dropping the engine out or anything. It's all there in front of you, which is fantastic. Um, moving on, actually, if I go around the other side, I'll just show you something. Because, as I was saying, having the engine hanging out on one side does obviously mean it's slightly imbalanced. Now, they do, to a degree, try and compensate for that. Um, by having a spare wheel under this side. Uh, now this is fantastically useful because if you do get a puncture you can just swap the wheels over which on these things is really easy to do. Um, but it also just helps to balance it out that little bit which is pretty nice. Um, now the drive to the wheel on these things is pretty good as well because it's not got a belt or a chain or anything like that. It is literally just got a um, it's just got the wheel attached to the output shaft of the gearbox, because this is a manual geared vehicle. Um, so you've got input shaft coming in from the engine, then you've got the gears, then you've got the output shaft going to the wheel. Um, so obviously from a maintenance point of view, you don't have to worry about replacing all these different things, which is fantastic. I mean, you know, that's great. Um, so moving on to the... Hang on, let me just check this. Yep, cool. Moving on to the uh, actual controls of this thing. So, as I mentioned, it is a manual geared uh, vehicle, not like modern scooters, it's not just a case of twist and go, no. Nope. So you've got your front brake here as usual, but then the left side uh, on a modern scooter would be the rear brake, this is the clutch, um, just like on a manual motorcycle. 
The difference between this and a proper normal motorcycle is that the gear change is actually on here, so you twist it to change gear. Um, so, for instance, if I pull that in and twist up, it will go into first, second, third, fourth, you get the idea. Um, obviously, that means that the rear brake isn't anywhere up here, so obviously it's down here. This little foot pedal here is the rear brake. Pretty decent stuff. There you go. Um, now, also on these, you do have a pretty decent size glove box. So if I just open that up for you, you can see there is quite a bit of space in there actually, which is quite nice. You've also got the wiring for the indicators and stuff, but you know, you can fit a lot in there, which is quite useful. Um, yeah, it's very nice. Right, moving on. If we go under the seat, see if this is open. Nope, got to unlock it. Go under the seat, under here. Come on. Oh, it's a little bit stuck. What's going on here then? <laughs> a little bit temperamental. Okay, well, for some reason I can't get under there, but never mind. Uh, there's not much to look at, but basically the fuel tank's under there, so you lift the seat up, you've got the fuel cap, you can fill it. That's fine. Um, now, with the classic two-stroke Vespers, uh, one thing you do have to do is pre-mix them. Um, that is to say, when you fill up with petrol, you also have to measure out the right amount of two-stroke oil and mix it in with them. This being a 2001 model, they do have a, um, a pre-mixer built into it. So you don't have to do that with this. You just have to fill up the separate oil tank and it automatically uh, has an auto lube system that automatically does the mixing for you. Um, now that you will be familiar with if you have had a two stroke modern scooter because they have the same system. They just have a separate tank next to the fuel tank. You fill up with two stroke oil and it does it all for you. So yeah, but if you have an older one of these, you actually had to do it yourself. So, I mean, I can remember I had a 125 version of this from the 1980s, early 80s. And um, I, every time I filled up fuel, I had to measure out the right amount of two-stroke oil, put it in the tank, give it a bit of a shake before I could get going. So, oh, they're great. I tell you what, they're such quirky, fun little things, these. They are fantastic. It's a shame you can't buy them anymore. Um, there was actually a company called LML um, that produced modern versions of these fairly recently and they did actually make a four-stroke engine um, for them as well which was fantastic because you know it, it brought them up to Euro 3 emissions and everything else and allowed you to carry on riding classic scooters. Vespa themselves then did actually bring back quite recently the 125 version of this in a two-stroke heavily um you know restricted because of the emissions and everything but they did sell it for a short while that has now just been discontinued again so we are now pretty much stuck with the modern ones but that, i mean that's fine as as anyone who saw my last review will know i am a big fan of the modern vespers anyway so that's perfectly fine but these classics are just so fun they really are so fun um just quickly before we start riding it, um, I'll just go through a few other quick things. So it has disc brake at the front, um, the standard, which is quite useful. Pretty sure it's drum brake at the back, if I remember rightly. Yeah. And then um, on this particular one, because it's owned by a very good acquaintance of mine, has had a few modifications. I've mentioned the cylinder. Um, it also has a SIP performance... Um, gauge uh, which if I turn this on now I'll just show you so it's not much of an upgrade as such but it does have a few useful features so uh, obviously we've got a digital fuel gauge here um, got the usual warning lights digital miles an hour I've got an RPM the useful thing is is I also have a temperature gauge so this is a two-stroke air-cooled engine but I have got a temperature gauge that tells me um, how warm it is it's got a sensor down on the cylinder head so there you go Good stuff. Right, let's take her for a ride, because that's what we really want to do. Ah, yeah, so I should mention, this does have an electric start, hence the PX200E. The E stands for electric start. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, with this particular bike, the electric start, I think the starter motor might just have worn out a bit, um, so it doesn't work all that well. But thankfully, it still has the good old-fashioned kickstart, so uh, let me just jump on this. There we go. Right, 
let's go for a ride. Can't actually see if there's anything coming, that's not good. Yep, we're good. Yeah, so as you can see, when I go to change gear, I'm twisting this. Now the only downside to that is, uh, so here we have the um, indicator switch, but of course when you change gear, the position of that switch changes. So you do have to kind of uh, bear that in mind. But other than that, it's quite fun to ride. I mean, it's by no means as refined as modern scooters. You know, it's got tiny little wheels. I mean, what are these? 10, maybe 12 inch wheels with really thin tires. You wouldn't really want to be riding this in particularly bad weather. They, they're not great for that, unfortunately. Um, but as I say, this is sort of getting to be a classic now, so it's not something that you'd necessarily want to take out all the time anyway. Uh, but yeah, so performance-wise, the 200 does have a bit more grunt than the 125s and everything else, but it only has about 12 brake horsepower. Now that pretty much puts it in the same league as most modern 125s, really. Uh, it does have a little bit more low-down grunt, but it's still not, you know. It's still not gonna blow your mind with performance. But that doesn't really matter because you don't really wanna go too fast on these things. As I said before, because the wheels are quite small and because, you know, the handling and the performance isn't like as good as modern bikes, Realistically, above 50 miles an hour gets a little bit sketchy, so it doesn't really matter that it's not got masses of power because you only really want to be cruising at about 40 50 anyway. It's not about speed and performance with these things, it's just about the style and about having fun. It's just such a funny little thing to ride, it, it really is. Because it's, I mean, honestly, if you ever sit on one of these, if you ever have a go on one of these, it's not like anything else you've ever ridden. It really isn't. It's a completely different experience. I mean, I'd highly recommend it. If you know someone that's got a classic Vespa or Lambaretta, um, or, you know, if you can get access to one, take it out for a little ride and just, you know, it is just so funny. They are incredibly funny. Oh, changing now to third for this corner bit. Anyone coming? No, we're good. I mean, that said, the handling on this thing isn't actually all that bad, considering how basic it is and how unrefined it is as well. I mean, it's only got a single shock at the back uh, and a single one at the front as well, I think. It, it's, it was never designed, you know, modern bikes or modern scooters, they're designed with kind of motorcycle um, handling characteristics. So they're a little bit better, but this, wasn't. But that's one of the things I love about it. It's not pretending to be anything. Like, modern scooters, as, and I've said this before, modern scooters, a lot of the time they are pretending to be motorcycles. Whereas the, these really aren't. I mean, these were never trying to be motorcycles. They were actually designed by someone who hated motorcycles. Um, and so he had this thing in mind that motorbikes were dirty things, and at the time they were. At the time, if you rode a motorcycle, chances are you were going to get dirty doing it because bits of oil and grease and crap would end up on your clothes and whatever. And he didn't like that. He wanted to create something where everything was enclosed, you had a bit of weather protection to keep the, the stuff from the road from getting on your nice trousers, and you could just cruise along and not care about you know, before I say anything else, it was a style. It, it was a stylish vehicle, it was practical at the time. Because um, it was created, the Vespas were created in a time when Italy needed cheap, reliable transport for the masses. Because it was just after the Second World War and they were absolutely knackered. They, you know, they needed a form of transport that your average person could afford. You know, that they could stick the girlfriend on the back, 
have a little bit of room in the front for your uh, wallet and stuff. You know, you can stick your shopping down between your legs. Yeah, it's just a great little, uh, great little vehicle. And they were created out of old uh, aeroplane parts. Uh, I'll do a little bit of a history thing on this uh, on a later video, but you know, this thing was just created out of bits of old aeroplane from a factory that used to yeah, make aeroplanes. So all the panels and all the um, engine and everything came from what they had to hand in the factory at the time, because the factory got bombed during the war. Uh, they lost half of the factory, so they had to get some sort of production going. But obviously they couldn't carry on what they were doing because half of the factory was destroyed. And this was the result. Well, not this specifically. The actual um, result was, you know, a little bit different styling-wise. But the basic principles behind it were exactly the same. I just find it fascinating. I find it absolutely wonderful. Right. Let's go around Ha. Woo! There we go. Yeah, as I say, I mean, riding this and riding my current 125, performance wise, they're about the same. But this, it kind of puts a smile on your face. And I can't even explain how or why. Because you can't take yourself seriously on it. Like, it's not a serious machine. So you just don't care. You're just relaxed. You're just thinking, yep, yeah, this'll do. I don't give too much of a toss what people think of me on it. It's a very stylish machine. You know, some people might disagree. Some people might hate these things and think it's ugly, but you know, each to their own. But for the most part, it is stylish. And you know, you'll still see people riding around on these quite a lot over in Italy. You go down Milan, places like that, you'll see quite a few Italians driving around on this kind of thing, happily bobbing along going, ciao, you know. Oh, it is great. It is fantastic. I wouldn't want, as I say, I had one before and, you know, you wouldn't want it for an everyday commuter or something. I mean, back when I had one of these, I did also have a modern um, Honda scooter as well. But this just... You know, it's more engaging. Modern scooters being fully automatic, all you do is twist the throttle and go. This, you've got to change gears, you've got the foot pedal brake there. It's You're more engaged in the ride, if that makes sense. You know, you feel more a part of what's going on. And I think that's fantastic. I think it's great. And I'll tell you what, it's not bad. I mean, look, we're doing... Oh, 58, 59, yeah. See, it will go faster. I mean, you know, 200 cc, it will do about 70 odd miles an hour, but I just, it's not really necessary. You know, about 50 miles an hour um, feels about right on these things. If you want to go faster, you do want to be on something like that. <laughs> Because it's the brakes and everything else, isn't it? I mean, this has got quite good brakes compared to the previous incarnations, but they're still not, you know, they're still quite small. They've still got tiny little wheels. You know, if you want to go faster, you want to be on something that's got the ability to stop from higher speeds. But no, overall, bloody good laugh. Right, I'll pull over in a minute. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to pull over down here, have a look down this new housing estate. Ooh. There you go, that'll do. That will do. Right, guys, well, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I will be doing a more in-depth review of a classic Lambretta soon. Uh, that's why I haven't gone too much into detail with this one, because I don't want to... Uh, say too much about classic scooters in general now uh, because I will be covering it in more detail when I do that um, But yeah, no for now. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video uh, If you did, please do give it a like and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I've got plenty of other videos on the channel um, Covering everything from modern, you know, super bikes, tourers, that kind of thing right down to obviously the classics um, scooters, motorcycles, everything um, Yeah, just go check them out um, and yes, for now, thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys again soon.